So I originally wanted to title this video something about poker mindset tips. However, that kind of sucks because then people either think, oh, this is going to be about therapy or this is going to be some woo woo crap with crystals and chakras. So I don't want to do that at all. Instead, I want to leave you with some good, solid poker wisdom. Let's go with that. Let's get started. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and today I wanna to talk about some real poker wisdom that I think is gonna be very helpful for you. Whether you've been playing for a little bit or been playing poker for years and years, I think this is gonna be very helpful, if nothing else, a little bit of a reminder and refresher in certain spots. So I wanna make this a quicker video, so let's just burn right through it. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on any given thing, so if you wanna see more on any specific subject, make sure to leave a comment down below. But number one is essentially the long run is extremely extremely long. So the main takeaway here is to not get influenced by short-term wins and losses. You aren't the world champ just because you won a hand or won a session or won for a month, and you're not the world's biggest loser because you lost a hand or had a losing session or had a losing month. One of the most interesting things about poker is that it has elements of skill and luck baked directly into the game, which means you can make the correct decision in a given spot and still end up losing a hand. And conversely, you can end up making a terrible decision and end up winning the hand. So the short-term results can and not necessarily be super indicative of whether or not you're making the best possible decision in any given spot. So the biggest takeaway is to make sure to focus on the decisions that you're making, make sure that they're strong, and in the longest of terms, everything will pan out. In the shortest of terms, there's gonna be a little bit of turbulence, we call that variance, and that's totally okay and baked into everything. Remember, fish will also have positive variance, which keeps them in the game longer, which is good for everyone. Wisdom number two, if you don't feel like playing today, don't. So if poker is your sole source of income and you absolutely need to put in volume, okay, sure, suck it up buttercup and get in there and get some grinding in. However, for the rest of us, which is 99.99999% of players, that's not the case. And as such, if you don't feel like playing, don't bother putting in a session that day. Because what's going to happen? If you're not in a good mood, which is probably what's leading to making you not want to play in the first place, well, you're going to go in, you're going to play, you're probably going to play a lesser version of your top game, and as such, higher probability you have a losing session which is going to put you in a worse mood and you're also down money for it so is that really what you want to do i'd say probably not life is too short don't do that to yourself go do something else instead get in a better mood and the next time you're in a good mood then go play that's going to do far far better for you number three humans are completely incapable of playing perfect gto poker now i mostly remind you of this for a few major reasons one is to don't set yourself up for unrealistic expectations if you expect yourself or force yourself into demand yourself to play perfect GTO poker, you've already failed. You won't do it. It is completely, completely impossible. Pure, perfect GTO poker is way, way, way too complex for a human to handle unassisted. It's not going to happen. Nobody else is doing it either. Do not hold yourself to this unrealistic expectation. Now, this in no way, shape, or form means that GTO poker is completely useless, not by any stretch of the imagination. There's a tremendous amount of work we can take from GTO solvers and work with solvers. However, if you're forced yourself for thinking you need to memorize sims in order to accomplish or compete in this game in any capacity that's not the case in the slightest and couple that with the fact that if you can find exploitative edges against an opponent that's going to be more profitable than just blindly adhering to a gto strategy but that's for another video altogether but make sure to keep this nugget of poker wisdom in mind number four is something i feel like i've been saying a lot recently and that is that edges exist in the work that other people will not do and this is partially a reminder that you do not not have to be the best poker player in the world to win money in this game. That's simply not the case. You just need to be better than the average opponent you play against. So if your average opponent is making massive mistakes against bets or making massive mistakes when betting or making massive mistakes in three bet pots, if you're able to put some extra work into those spots and your opponents simply aren't because most poker players simply don't study, and yes, just watching poker twitches and poker YouTube just really, really passively isn't really studying if I'm being totally honest, then if you put in a little bit of time and effort here in these spots that are important that come up regularly, you will develop good edges and of course in the shortest of terms it's not necessarily going to express easily but in the longest of terms most certainly you're developing a great edge and will have a nice profitable win rate in that game remember you don't have to be the best poker player in the world to win money you just have to be better than the players you play against number five understand your goals with poker simply because your goals should be influencing the path you're taking on and off the table if you just simply want to compete well you can do that at any level since money isn't really the major 
major thing, you just want to compete. Or some people want to compete, but they want to compete against players that they think are very skilled, and as such, their goal is to move into those games as quickly as possible. So it really depends on what you're playing this game for. For most people starting out, I would not suggest poker as a profession. Focus on just making good decisions, enjoying your time at the table, making some level of hourly having a profitable hobby is great, especially compared to other possible hobby options. Poker is really, really great for that, but it's going to take time. It's going to take effort. And if you understand what your goals are, it's going to help you kind of craft that plan for off table study, how much of that you're going to put in, where you're going to play, how you're going to play. And I definitely make sure to spend the time and effort going through that off table. And I would suggest spending some time writing this down for yourself. That way you're making sure that you're spending your on and off table time appropriately. That is going to help you get the most out of poker. And number six is something that still makes me laugh every time I read the sentence, and that is to remember that your memory sucks. So as far as I can tell, our brains are hardwired for self-preservation. Think about it. Your brain is going to remember where danger and pain lies extremely well, since that's a very, very important thing. And if you think about your caveman brain, it's good to remember where you might die. However, it's not particularly good at remembering neutral events or even slightly positive events either. Our brains are really good at remembering the pulls of things, not so much the stuff in the middle, which means your brain is more likely to remember a spot where you got it in with aces preflop and end up losing against some ridiculous hand and less likely to remember the time you got it in with kings preflop and won against your opponent queens. And I think the only way to work around this is to really force yourself to be as objective as you possibly can. No, you don't lose every time you have pocket kings. And no, you don't miss the flop every time you have ace king. It's just simply not what's actually happening. But the issue is that people remember these bad events and then they start saying them more regularly and then it actually like imprints somewhere in their brain and it's all of a sudden integrated that that is actually the case and the objective truth for them. It's not. It's not at all the case. It's not at all what's actually happening. So you have to be very, very careful when you're thinking about self-talk or you're describing something to someone. No, it does not always happen that way. No, bad things do not always 100% of the time happen to you. Will they happen to you regularly in poker? For sure. They happen to all of us. It's not like you're alone in this and you're the only person experiencing some bad variance event. You're not in the slightest, I assure you. And for what it's worth, if you're really struggling with this, you're constantly hyper-focused on the negative things that have happened, you're really struggling to objectively remember any positive things that have happened. At the end of every session, I want you to write down three things on a left side of a paper, three things on a right side of a paper. On the left, write down some bad things that happened. On the right, write down three good things that happened. And it could be something even basic like flop top pair with ace queen or whatever basic thing happened. And then go back and review that every so often. So that way you can say, oh no, good things have objectively happened as well. It's not only bad things that will kind of force you to start looking at this thing more objectively and help your brain actually remember, no, 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 it's not all negative that's happening to me all the time. So those are the six pieces of timeless poker wisdom that I had for today, but I'm curious if you have any that you would add to this list. If you do, regardless of what it is, just drop it in a comment down below, and while you're down there, give the video a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. I'd massively appreciate that. But I'm very curious to see what else you would add to this list, because I'm sure this list could easily get up into the hundreds of items. I just thought six might be a nice little starter point, at least just to make sure this video wasn't hours and hours long. But that's going to wrap it for this one. Thank you so much for hanging out today. I really hope you enjoyed. If you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, as always, good luck out there and happy grinding.